A blessed morning, everyone. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, whether you're joining here on-site or you're joining us online. A blessed morning to you. Now, today is the 2nd of July. And since it's July 2, alam nyo, napaka-special yung day na yan para sa akin. You see, exactly 13 years ago, my wife and I were blessed with two bundles of joy. That's right, our twin daughters were born July 2, 2010. Siguro yung mga doktor that time, tatakot sila malito, wala pang pangalan, they just put tapes yung mga nurse na nilagyan nila. Ito si Baby A, that's Taya, she was the one who came out first. And then, si Tyree is Baby B. Since it's their 13th birthday today, we now have certified teenagers in our household. Meron na kaming teenagers. And... I couldn't be prouder as a dad. That's true. By God's grace, they've grown up to be very loving, caring, responsible, and God-fearing. On top of being good students, they are the ones who take care of their siblings. Magaling sila magalaga. In fact, pag nighttime, Taya and Tyree would take turns in putting Shoti to sleep. And they would also play with him, take care of him. And in their own little ways, they've been serving in church. A while ago, I think you saw Tyree playing the guitar. Taya naman, she helped Kanina setting up outside sa ating kids' activity area. And I'm really blessed seeing their development. Nakakataba na puso na makita yung growth nila at yung kanilang mga development. So, Taya and Tyree, I love you very much, and my prayer is that you'll continue to grow in the knowledge of God, in your love for God, and your obedience to God. Now, when our twins were still babies, I remember people would often ask us, how is it like to have twins at home? Ano bang feeling na may dalawa kang anak tapos kambal? Huh? And I would always answer the same way. Sabi ko, Having twins is like having double the blessing, but at the same time, double the trouble. Double blessing, pero double yung trabaho. Yes, double yung benefit, yung joy, yung delight na nakukuha dahil dalawa sila. Pero double rin yung challenges na meron in raising them up. And speaking of challenges, one of the adversities we faced early on when they were born was uh, had to do with Taya's health. You see, when Taya was born, she displayed all signs of good health. Oh, healthy naman, mukhang okay, masayahin silang dalawa. But a few days later, napansin namin that she started to have rapid and shallow breathing. So, para siyang hinihingal. No? Hirap na hirap. Yung uh, Parang pagod na pagod siya lagi. No? She had difficulty eating, and lagi siyang inaantok. And we can compare because we see Tyree, parang very active, but her twin sister, parang laging pagod, laging out of breath. And we were alarmed when she suddenly lost her voice. No? Umiiyak siya, pero walang boses lumalabas. No? My tears, pero wala. No? So talagang uh, confused kami, ano nangyayari? Checkups later revealed that Taya has major heart defects. She actually had two major holes in her heart. And this caused her heart to pump extra hard. No? Kailangan mag-overwork over time kasi hirap eh para ma-regulate yung blood flow. And this caused her to, uh, yun, natalagang hirap na hirap. And left unaddressed, it will just get worse and worse. Now, you can probably imagine how I felt as a young dad and a new dad, and seeing my daughter so fragile, so helpless. Oh, it really broke my heart. Instead of hearing the crying sounds like normal babies do, yung anak ko, wala walang voices, no? Ang narinig namin yung wheezing bout. Habang <laughs> niya, 
Hihinga lagi. As if she was catching for her every breath. And those of you who are parents here know exactly what I mean. No? You know the understand yung anxiety that a sick baby can cause. In fact, as I'm saying this, possibly iba sa inyo naalala niyo pa yung first time na, na nagkasakit yung anak niyo, whether that's a fever or nandala sa hospital, and stressful yun pag ganun. Knowing that a loved one is in pain can cause us to feel pain as well. Now, Taya's health issue wasn't the only challenge we faced during that time. You see, the night before the twins were born, so they were born July 2, right? So the night before, my wife, Tiffany, suddenly lost control over the muscles of her face. Biglaan. No? She was resting, and pagtingin ko sa kanya, no? kasi we were scheduled for CS the next day. As she was resting, I noticed na parang tumutulo yung laway niya, yung saliva. Tapos, sabi ko, ginising ko siya. And then, apansin namin, wala, wala siya nafe-feel, no? And at the same time, naging nuwi na. If you've ever seen people who under uh, went stroke or had a stroke, parang nawala yung facial muscle and control. So yung isang side, talagang tabingi, and di siya makagalaw. Now, we were so alarmed, kasi mga anak din siya the next day, but uh, we, so we had to go to the hospital right away in the middle of the night, but the doctors can't do anything because yung babies na sa loob. So, hindi siya mabigay ng steroids, hindi mabigay ng any test pa, ang hirap. So, we had to wait. And so, it was a really difficult time. I had to take care of my wife kasi naman siya nag-end on. And I have to take care of my two kids. And one had a heart problem. Now, on top of that, I was taking my master's studies in the seminary. And at that time, we were living in our school campus. But after my wife gave birth, we found out, we discovered, the school informed us that we have to give up our unit because uh, other foreign students would be using it. So parang sabay-sabay, no? Compound yung situation, and daming challenges. Kailangan na lumipat ng bahay bigla while I was taking care of family members. Now, obviously, it was a very, very tough time for our family. It's a very tough time. Uh, nakapanghina yung situation namin and we didn't have control over any of those things. And during times like this, hindi maiwasan na ma-discourage. No? Mapanghinaan ang loob. Now, come to think of it, I was in full-time ministry. I was serving as a pastor and I gave up my career to follow God's calling. Pero I was facing all of this and I was dumbfounded, no? And it seemed like my back was on the wall, against the wall. How I wish that the challenges ended there 13 years ago, but the truth is, we continue to face challenges until today. No? We continue to face adversities and we'll continue to face adversities. In fact, this truth applies to all of us. Adversity is a constant thing in life. Adversity is a constant thing in life. None of us is immune to challenges. Some people think that if you follow God, nako siguro easy na yung buhay mo, walang problema, relax, relax lang, God will take care of everything. But nothing can be further from the truth. Throughout the Bible, followers of God encountered all kinds of hardships. Just look at the apostles, the disciples, the prophets. They were persecuted. They were ridiculed. Even Jesus himself faced adversities. And so trials are something we all face and we will continue to face. It's a constant thing in life. Now, as I say these things, I realize that there are those of us who are currently going through some challenges at the moment. Perhaps it has to do with your work or with your health, with your relationship, or with your finances. And because of this, you may be feeling discouraged. You see, during difficult times, our, test, our faith is tested. 
in moments that we feel down, we are tempted to question God. Na papatanong tayo na, is He really in control? And if we should continue to trust Him. Na papakwestiyon tayo kung worth it ba talaga to persevere. If it's really worthwhile to serve God. Since we all face adversities, we need to seriously consider who we surround ourselves with. Kailangan natin talaga isipin, sino ba yung mga tao nasa paligid natin? Sa dami ng pagsubok, sa dami ng challenges, sa dami ng trials sa buhay. Kailangan natin pag-isipan, sino ba yung mga tao nasa paligid natin? I mean, do we have people around us who will be there with us through thick and thin? Meron ba tayong mga tao sa buhay natin na nandoon palagi? People who will give us the support that we need during the most trying times. Someone who will say the right words to keep us going. Someone who will do whatever it takes to encourage us. Now, if you just joined us today, we're continuing with our message series called One Another. And in this series, we're studying God's design of doing life together. See, by ourselves, we cannot fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Especially if you consider yourself a follower of Christ. If you consider yourself a believer, then hindi pwedeng ikaw lang magjo-journey sa buhay nito. God wants us to be integrated in a spiritual community called the church. And as we learned before, the phrase one another appears around a hundred times in the New Testament. And majority of this are commands on how we should relate to one another. And to neglect these commands is actually tantamount to disobeying God. That's why we're spending this series to learn about these one another's. In our first week, we look at the command to, ano raw? Love one another. Pinag-usapan natin kung ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng Bible when it says to love one another. And we learn together what it means. Naalala niyo pa ba? We should love us. We should love us. Jesus loves us. We should love as God loves us. And how does God love us? He loves us sacrificially, steadfast, and in a sanctifying way. That's how God loves us. Now, in our second week, we study the command to forgive one another. Together, we discovered that God wants His children to forgive one another and to forgive as He has forgiven us. And how has God forgiven us? Paano nga ba? Graciously, completely, and repeatedly. Now, this morning, we'll look at the biblical command to encourage one another. To encourage one another. Now, since mababa yung energy natin, can we all look at a person beside us? No? Can you turn to the person around you and say, we are called to encourage one another. So, tignan mo yung kabila mong partner naman. Sabihin mo, encourage mo ako, ha? Okay. okay. Why don't we read our sermon passage for today? It's actually found in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Why don't we all read this together? Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. Now, this verse was written by the Apostle Paul to the believers in Thessalonica. So, sinulatan ni Paul, yung mga believers doon, and actually, he wrote two letters. That's why we have First and Second Thessalonians. His main purpose for writing was to provide teaching about the end times and Jesus' second coming. So, sumulat siya so that the congregation will know on the, what to expect regarding Jesus' return. And at the same time, how should they behave? How should they conduct themselves while waiting for Jesus' return? Gusto niya maging handa ang bawat believer sa pagbalik ni Jesus Christ. Now, part of that instruction includes encouraging one another towards faithful, holy living while waiting for Jesus' return. Sabi ni Paul, believers need to continue encouraging one another as we wait for Jesus' second coming. And the truth is, Paul's instruction to the believers in Thessalonica also applies to each one of us. 
it is still applicable to us today. As we wait for Jesus' return, we should prioritize encouraging one another. And so, here's what we'll do this morning. We'll first look at the biblical definition of encouragement. And then afterwards, we'll look at the biblical example of encouragement. So, biblical definition, biblical example. Let's start with the biblical definition. Now, many people think that affirmation is equivalent to encouragement. But the reality is, encouragement, biblical encouragement, is not about complimenting. It's not merely about affirmation. Akala ng marami that by merely giving positive compliments, you're already encouraging someone. For example, Brother Marvin, ang ganda ng suot mo ngayon, bagay na bagay sa'yo, ha, ang forma. Brother, grat na lang. Ganda ng gupit mo today, ha. Harang bagay na bagay sa'yo. Huh? Or, alam mo, Paula, ang ganda ng ano mo today, ng aura mo today. No? So, or, alam mo, Tyree, you're really so smart. So, people think that you're already doing your job in encouraging if you give positive compliments. Diba? Na-affirm mo na eh. But affirmation alone is not encouragement. While it's nice to receive positive compliments, encouraging someone takes more than affirmation. Let me give you an example. Suppose that Brother JC, I see Brother JC ang ating host kanina, di ba? Suppose Brother JC wants to be a song leader here in Crossroads Redeemed Church. Oh, tama pa tawa na si Brother JC, no? And gusto niyang maging tulad ni Bruno Mars sa pagkanta. Ha? Papangiti kayo, ha? mga nasa likod. And he has been practicing a lot. No? Sa, pag nasa CRC, Brother JC, kung kakanta talaga siya, pag nasa bayay siya, he would watch YouTube videos, gagayahin niya lahat ng mapanood niya, no? si Bruno Mars, sinasabayan niya lahat. No? Nag-voice lessons na rin siya. Unfortunately, Brother JC is tone deaf. No matter how he tries, alam niya ng, alam ng lahat na wala siya sa tono. And he feels discouraged because he really wants to sing. Diba? Now, here you are, you see him discouraged, and nalala mo, di ba sabi ni Pastor Don, encourage one another. Tapos meron pa tayong say to your seatmate, why don't I encourage this guy? So, lumapit ka kay Brother JC, and say mo sa kanya, alam mo Brother JC, you're a really good singer. No? And you say all the nice things to make him feel better. You give all the compliments. You tell him that, actually, hindi ka naman bad singer. See, my friends, that is not encouragement. Ang tawag dyan, flattery. Pambobola. And encouragement is not about flattery. The Bible actually warns us about flattery. In Proverbs 26:28, it says, A lying tongue hates its victims, and a flattering mouth works ruin. In other words, when you flatter someone, it's like a poison. It's very dangerous. It will ultimately harm its hearers. While you might have complimented Brother JC with flattery, you did not really encourage him. Some people think that they are good encouragers, but the reality is, magaling lang sila mambola. And that's not encouragement. Now, biblical encouragement is also not about giving false hope. It's not about false hope. Some people think that to encourage someone, you need to paint an artificially rosy picture. No? For example, again, si Brother JC, no? sabi mo, alam mo, Brother JC, kulang ka lang sa practice. Mag-practice ka pa. May kilala akong vocal coach, si Coach Leia. Pag nag ka under her, gagaling ka. In fact, pwede ka na mag-concert sa field sports arena. But we all know that it will most likely never happen. Or, what if someone at work tells you that her spouse is cheating and she's going through rough times? And because you remember na kailangan mag-encourage, you tell them that it's okay. 
Alam mo, di, magiging ayos din yan. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Titino din yung asawa mo. But the truth is, it may not be okay. And the situation may even get worse. Or someone has cancer. And you say, no, naku, wala lang yan. Uh, ano gagaling ka? Hindi, no, may kilala akong doktor. Pag puntahan mo to, okay ka. You think that you're being a good encourager by doing that. Problem is, you're probably giving that person false optimism. And be an encouragement. And so, ano nga ba talaga ang encouragement according to the Bible? Well, the Greek word Paul used in 1 Thessalonians 5 is paraklesis. And it carries the idea of bringing someone alongside. You call someone to bring him alongside. You take someone alongside. Itatabi mo siya sa sarili mo. And its purpose, kaya mo siya bring alongside, is to enable the person to meet a difficult situation, a challenge with confidence. So you take someone alongside with the intention, with the purpose of helping him or her meet a difficult challenge with confidence. And we do this not by, just by our words, but also by our actions. Now, last Holy Week, my family and I had a chance to go to Malarayat in Batangas, Salipa. And I was invited to speak at a church camp. And I was, I was there. Of course, I was with my whole family. And happy all. No? Happy wife, happy family then, right? So all uh, the barcades were together sa Malarayat. And kids had a wonderful time, aside from having their own sessions, Maraming free time. And during the free time, they went fishing, they played around, and they tried different things. Now, one of the things that we did during the free time, especially our twins, they tried biking. You see, when they were very young, when we were still in Palawan, we bought them bikes, pero yung tatlo pa yung gulong, tinatulak. No? And since then, na outgrown na nila, hindi na uli sila nagbike until recently. And how was it like biking? Was it difficult? <laughs> so mahirap, right? Hindi siya madali, right? Or especially or yung first time you again. And so, seeing them, no, hirap na hirap, syempre, I want to encourage them. But by merely telling them, oh, you can do it. No? Or, sige, ito gawin mo, yung gawin mo. Kulang. No? I did everything I can. I took them by my side. Tinabihan ko sila. And as they were biking, I was beside them all the way. Kasi kung hindi, mahuhulog sila. Eh. So, kailangan i-balance. So, isa-isa sila. One at a time, one at a time. I had to support them physically. I had to support them verbally. The goal was to help them overcome a challenge with confidence. Now, in many ways, biblical encouragement is like helping someone ride a bike. We come alongside another person to enable that person to meet a difficult situation with confidence. In fact, you can probably say that to encourage others is to give courage to others. To encourage others is to give courage to others. It involves giving courage to another person. You come alongside another person to enable him to meet a challenge. And we pr- pr- do this with our words and our actions. Now that we know, yan pala yung definition ng biblical encouragement, tignan natin ngayon kung ano yung biblical example of someone who is famous for demonstrating this kind of encouragement. And that, my friends, is Joseph. Si Joseph. Siya yung good example ng biblical encouragement. Now, let me ask you. When you hear the name Joseph, which Bible character comes to your mind? Sino ba yung mga Joseph na kilala natin? Si Joseph the dreamer ha? Sa, sa Genesis. He was the son of Jacob. He had 11 other brothers. And he's called the dreamer kasi lagi siya na naginip. E nagalit yung mga kapatid niya. Binenta siya. And ang ganda story niya. And 
nandun yung forgiveness and all, he trusted God, nandun yung integrity. We know of Joseph, the dreamer. Sino pa ba? May ibang Joseph pa ba tayo kilala? Joseph, the father of Jesus Christ. Joseph, the carpenter. We know him as the husband of Mary. And he's also to be commended because he had great faith in God na kahit yung si Mary, buntis, inaccept niya, pinakasala niya si Mary. And he's to be commended. Meron pa ba tayong kilalang Joseph sa Bible? Joseph of Arimathea. He owned the land, and when Jesus uh, died on the cross, he gave his property, and he raised his reputation and buried Jesus in his own tomb. And he's to be commended also for his boldness and kindness. But the thing is, the Joseph that we want to look at today is not any of those that we mentioned. In fact, you probably don't even know him as Joseph, for he is better known by his nickname. Friends, I'm talking about Barnabas. Have you heard of him? Barnabas. Interestingly, Barnabas literally means son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. And the first time we encounter Barnabas is in Acts chapter 4. Why don't we all read Acts chapter 4 together? Masahin na natin. Can we read this out loud? Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. So, kakaiba, di ba? Joseph pala ang real name ni Barnabas. And he was so well known for being an encourager that people stopped referring to him as Joseph by his real name. In fact, Luke, who is the author of Acts, never again refers to this individual by his real name. Instead, he calls him Barnabas 23 other times in Acts, no? Sa dami ng binang, beses na binanggit si Barnabas sa Acts, one time lang siyang tinawag na Joseph, the rest of the time, Barnabas, son of encouragement. Paul himself referred to Barnabas in his letters. But never one, did he refer to him as Joseph, laging Barnabas din. Think about that, for you to be called by your nickname. Barnabas so well, was so well known for being an encourager that people stopped referring to him by name. And so, if we are to have a character study on what is it like to be a biblical encourager, we can't go wrong with this guy, si Joseph. Uh, let me just highlight two ways by which Barnabas encouraged others. See, first of all, he encouraged others with his generosity. He encouraged others with ano raw? his generosity, through his generosity. Let's read again the passage we read a while ago. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means sons of encouragement, sold a, ano raw? A field he owned. And what did he do with the money? He brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now, this is very interesting. According to our passage, Barnabas sold the land that he owned and donated the money to the church leaders. For the church, for the apostles' use. Why did he do that? Well, in the first few chapters of Acts, we learned that the early church was experiencing tremendous growth. In fact, one time, Peter preached a sermon, and immediately in one day, 3,000 people were baptized. That all transpired in just one day. Now, I want you to look around this room right now. Sige nga, tignan natin. Okay. Now, Imagine if next Sunday, 3,000 people wants to worship with us here at Sketch Collective. Ah, si Paula at si Kali, napapa, wow, di ba? Parang yung mata, hindi mo alam ang gagawin. No? Obviously, hindi tayo kasha. Even if we have an overflow outside, hindi pa rin. Aside from the seating capacity, we don't have enough parking space here at Sketch. Now, on top of that, surely there will be logistical concerns. Now, our tech team needs to arrive early Sunday morning every week just to prepare all this stuff. And minsan naaabutan yun, may mga inaayos pa kami dito. Just last night, Brother Pierre, Brother Grant, 
what we're here to set up and to test things out. Kasi pag sa Sunday morning nila itetest yung gagawin nila, kulang sa oras. So they came here last night and medyo late na sila nakauwi. And then after service, we all have to pack things up since we don't own this place and may ibang paggagamitan yung uh, lugar. Now, just imagine the logistical needs the early church had with this sudden increase in number. While growth is a good thing, it also comes with growing needs. And definitely, mas marami rin expenses as they minister to people in church. There are those who were financially in need, especially the orphans and the widows. And the church took care of their needs, their physical needs. Now, knowing these concerns, Barnabas generously shared to others what he had. He used his own resources to provide for the growing needs of his brothers and sisters in Christ. He sold his own possession and donated the money to the church. He trusted the church leaders on how the finances will be managed. By doing so, Barnabas made sure that the momentum of the early church will keep going. And you can just imagine how many people were blessed by this act and generosity of Barnabas. He stood alongside those who were in need by providing tangible support. Others who have heard of generous donation would have been encouraged also to be generous as well. You see, Barnabas was a model to them. Na encourage yung mga may physical needs, na nakatakamdap ng blessing, na encourage din yung iba na, alam mo, kaya ko rin ito mag-give ah. You see, Barnabas encouraged others by generously sharing what he possessed. And the truth is, we can also do the same. By God's grace, many of us here are blessed by God financially. And we can encourage others by sharing our blessings. There are people in our midst who have financial needs. We have missionaries, and they are out in the field, and they would need also our support. In fact, at the end of each week, we also give out details on how you can support and expand God's kingdom ministry. You see, as we have a growing ministry, we also have a growing need. We've all been blessed by God in varying degrees, and there's no reason why we can't encourage others by being generous with our treasures. Having said that, being generous is not limited with our material possessions, to our material possessions. You see, we can be generous also with our time. We can visit those who are sick, we can do errands on their behalf, whether groceries or errands, paglulutuan natin, may babysit. We can offer a listening ear. We can express our generosity to others in a host of different ways. Ang daming pwedeng bagay. No? Again, I'm reminded of our tech team and our logistics team. Personally, I'm blessed and encouraged with the dedication of our friends who sacrifice their time to minister to each of us every Sunday. Many of them have their own businesses, pero pagdating sa linggo, mabubuhat sila, nag sila, they sacrifice. On days I may feel drained in serving others, I feel encouraged when I see others generously sharing their time. You see, the point is, we are to encourage one another with our generosity. We are to encourage others by being generous with our treasure. We can be generous also by sharing our time. Si Barnabas, he encouraged others with his generosity. At the same time, he encouraged others with his intentionality. With his intentionality. We see this again and again in how he related with others. Barnabas even stood beside a guy who was severely doubted and discriminated by others. Let's read Acts chapter 9, starting with verse 19. Can we all read this out loud? Verse 19. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. 
All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, let me quickly give you a background on what was happening here. The Saul that's being mentioned here is actually the Apostle Paul. Saul is his Hebrew name. Paul was his Greek name. So he has dual name. It's similar to, to those of us who are Phil Chai. Meron tayong English name, pero meron tayong Chinese name. No, si Paul ganun din, may dual name siya. And we learn from scriptures that before his conversion, Saul, was, he persecuted Christians. He, one time he actually went to Damascus with the intent to put Christians behind bars. But while on the road, Jesus appeared to Saul. And from that powerful encounter, Saul started to follow Jesus. Nag-convert si, si, si Saul. And he began to teach others about Jesus. Now, that resulted to mixed reaction uh, from those around him. Some were astonished with Paul's transformation, while others were furious with his conversion. Uh, in fact, basahin natin ito. Let's continue. Verse 23. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan, and day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. Grabe, diba? Put yourself in Paul's shoes. You're a new believer. You gave up your old ways. But the challenges are mounting left and right. Many are against you, and many are even trying to kill you. And di sila niniwala na nagbago ka na. Many are trying to kill you for your new belief. Kung ikaw si Paul, how do you think you'd feel? Hindi ba nakaka-discourage, nakakapanghina? Ito na nga eh, give up ka eh, so serve mo na si God. Pero ito ngayon, ang daming galit sa'yo. Ang dami pa ang gustong umatake sa'yo. Verse 26. When he, referring to Saul, came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. Referring to the disciples, followers of Jesus. But they, the disciples, were ano raw? all afraid of Saul, not believing that he really was a disciple. See, as if the challenges Saul faced weren't enough, the people who were supposed to support him, to help him, did not want to do anything with him. Our text says that the disciples of Jesus doubted Paul and were afraid of him. You see, it's one thing to be doubted by fellow church members, but it's another thing to be doubted by your church leaders. And yun yung nangyari kay Paul. He was doubted and rejected by the leaders of the church. And I can just imagine how tough that moment was for Paul. Kasi it would have been tempting for him to just give up, quit his new faith. He could have said, kung ayaw niyo sa akin, edi, hindi, balik na lang ako sa old faith ko, balik na lang ako sa Judaism. It appeared that the church leaders didn't know what to do with Paul and were avoiding him at all costs. Now, compare that to how Barnabas handled the situation. Verse 27. Let's read this together. But Barnabas took Saul and brought him to the Apostles. Barnabas told them how Saul, on his journey, had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. You see what Paul did? Paul? He took Saul and brought him to the apostles. He went out of his way and took Barnabas along his side 
and brought him to the church leaders. Their Barnabas testified in behalf of Saul. And he explained the changes that had taken place in Saul's life. In short, Barnabas intentionally stood beside Paul. Amidst all the doubts, see Barnabas, he was willing to stick his neck out and accept Paul. Which wasn't easy to do because he was going to risk his own reputation and credibility. Now, what was the result of Barnabas' acts? Let's read verse 28. After Barnabas brought Saul to the apostles, and kinomed niya, and binigyan niya ng testimony, ito nangyari. Saul stayed with them, the apostles, and he moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. Because Barnabas stood beside Paul intentionally, the church leaders were encouraged to accept Paul. Barnabas' courageous actions influenced the church leaders to be courageous as well. And that is to accept and integrate Paul into the church. But Barnabas' intentionality didn't end there. You see, if you read the rest of the book of Acts, you'll discover that Barnabas actually served as Paul's mentor. Barnabas took Paul under his wings and he mentored him. Again, that was a big risk on Barnabas' end. Paul was a baby Christian and he was rough, rough around the edges. But that didn't stop Barnabas from standing beside Paul. And we all know how Paul turned out. In fact, many would consider him as the greatest apostle of all time. Of the 27 New Testament books that we have, do you know how many books Paul wrote? He wrote at least 13. At least 13. No? Many think, siya rin nagsulat ng Hebrews, pero hindi, so pag pasama pa Hebrews, 14. But most likely, he wrote at least 13. And that's around half of the entire New Testament. He pioneered mission work, he planted many churches, and he discipled, mentored so many other pastors and church planters. And you and I are beneficiaries of Paul's ministry. But behind all of Paul's success is the guy who is called the son of encouragement, si Joseph. Kung wala yung intentionality ni Barnabas in encouraging Paul, iba siguro itsura ng Bible natin and ng church history. You see, Barnabas modeled to us how to encourage those who may feel doubted, discriminated, and discouraged. You see, we don't have to wait for these people to reach out to us. See, Barnabas, hindi naman siya eh. He was the one who sought after Paul, and looked out for Paul, and siya yung, he brought him along his side. Like Barnabas, we can go out of our way and take people beside us. And we can speak in behalf of those who feel voiceless. We can open the doors of opportunity by lending our credibility. Paul isn't the only one Barnabas intentionally encouraged. Again and again, if you look at the book of Acts, Barnabas encouraged believers from all over. And this list includes a guy who was probably labeled as a failure. Someone labeled as a failure. Let's read Acts 15. Starting with verse 26. Basahin natin to. 36. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, who's also called Mark, see John Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he, ano raw? He deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. Now, here's what happened. After a significant time of serving together, Paul suggested to Barnabas, Alam, Barnabas, why don't we go back to the churches we previously planted so that we can check on them, let's revisit them, and we can also minister to them again. And Barnabas agreed 
No? Sabi niya, okay idea. But, let's bring John Mark. Dalhin natin si Mark. Now, Mark served as their ministry assistant during their first missionary journey. However, something happened. And Paul did not like the idea of bringing along John Mark. You see, Mark deserted them during their first missionary journey. We don't know the exact details. Maybe he felt homesick. Maybe napagod siya. Maybe discouraged din siya. Whatever his reason was, Mark failed his mission. At the very least, Mark was a disappointment. And inisip siguro ni Paul, pabigat lang si Mark pagdadalhin natin. Hindi maaasahan. And so, hindi nagkasundo si Paul at si Barnabas. In fact, look at what happened next. Verse 39. Paul and Barnabas had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas, ano raw? Took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left. Commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. Because they couldn't reach a consensus, they just decided to go on their separate ways. They continued to do ministry work, but they took different companions. Si Paul, kinawa niya si Silas, pero si Barnabas, sino sinama niya? Si Mark. He went to look for Mark, and he brought him alongside. We are told that Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyrus. He brought Mark along his side. Now, we won't hear of Mark again in the rest of Acts. Hindi na. Wala na tayong maririg tungkol kay Mark. In fact, si Barnabas, hindi natin sila maririnig. However, Paul himself will mention Mark's name in some of his letters. Nearing the end of his life, Paul wrote to Timothy. And he had this to say about John Mark. 2 Timothy 4 verse 11. Let's read this together. Sabi ni Paul, Get Mark and bring him with you. For he is, ano raw? Very useful for me for ministry. Now, this is very interesting. Someone who was known as a failure in ministry ended up as being someone who's useful for ministry. Now, scholars tell us that this same Mark is the author of the Gospel of Mark, the second book in the New Testament. Si John Mark, siya yung author ng Gospel of Mark. And for centuries, people have been reading his work, and countless of people have been influenced by Mark's writings. Makes you wonder how he ended up that way. It wouldn't be a surprise if the son of encouragement had a profound influence in Mark's turnaround. You see, during Mark's lowest moment, Barnabas took him by his side and he intentionally labored to encourage him. Barnabas encouraged others with his generosity and his intentionality. Had it not been for Barnabas, Paul might never have been accepted in the Jerusalem church. Mark may have decided to give up serving the Lord. Instead, both of them persevered. And they combined to write more than half of the New Testament. Thirteen letters by Paul and one gospel written by Mark. Such is the power of encouragement. In fact, history is filled with many accounts of people who accomplish great things because someone encouraged them. We can never underestimate the impact of encouraging one another. And the amazing thing is we don't need to have a special training or a special talent just to encourage one another. You don't have to be a pastor to be effective in the area of encouraging. Like Barnabas, you and I can encourage through our generosity, through our intentionality. You've personally, now I've personally experienced how powerful the encouragement of others can be, especially during trying times. Earlier, I shared 
the challenges my family experienced 13 years ago. Now, in God's goodness, He allowed us to experience being encouraged by other believers. Many encouraged us with their generosity. Uh, during the time that my wife's face was sort of paralyzed, we eventually discovered and we found out that she had Bell's palsy. And so for months, wala yung movement niya. And she had to undergo therapy. Now, a Christian lady, a Christian friend, knew of our situation. Siya yung therapist na nag-serve sa amin sa hospital. And it just so happened, we were schoolmates from before. And we, when she learned of our situation, she volunteered to be the one to do the therapy sessions of my wife. So after being hospitalized, tagal din kami, sobra namin dami doktor, when, we were, when my wife was discharged, that Christian therapist would go to our place uh, several times a week and do therapy sessions for her, free of charge. Out of love lang, ayaw niya tumanggap na anything. And she did this for uh, six months until my wife was able to recover from her Bell's palsy. Another Christian couple learned of our difficult situation in taking of care of two kids. My wife na parang paralyzed, tas maghanap pa kami ng bahay maglilipat. So, she lent to us their katiwala, the one who raised up their kids. So, pinahiram niya yung kanilang yaya sa amin for a whole month so that may tutulong sa amin sa pag-alaga ng kids. Every single day for every meal during that first month, ang daming pagkain ng misis ko. No? People will bring food during her geelay, and every single meal, sobra-sobra overflowing, na ako mismo tumaba kasi hindi niya maubos. No? Ganun ka uh, loving and encouraging yung mga Christian friends uh, sa paligid natin. Someone even offered a house for us to use. As for our finances, uh, you see, Taya's condition required uh, for us to undergo a procedure, and it was quite expensive. Now, we didn't ask for any money or anything, but when people learned of our situation, many offered to help, and many gave lovingly, without us asking. We didn't know how much we were but meron na lang bibigay. Because of that, Taya was able to undergo a procedure on her six month, and 13 years have passed. Taya has been healthy ever since. Uh, hindi na siya inihingal <laughs> tulad dati. Ang galing lang talaga ni Lord. No? Ang galing lang talaga ni Lord. This was a photo taken just before her procedure. Taya was sitting on Tiff's lap. By that time, Medyo naka-recover na si Tiff from her Bell's palsy. Medyo ngiwi pa konti, pero medyo okay na yung smile niya. Tidy was sitting on my lap. Now, you can see the difference in their size. One was remarkably bigger. The other one, way thinner. No? She was already taking medicines to help her heart while waiting for her procedure. Kasi the procedure can only be done after her six months. So, ayan yung itsura nila. And you can look at our twin daughters right now. I'm not sure if you can see any difference between their size. No? Baka si Atsi pa si Taya, mas konting malaman pa kay Hayri. All by God's grace. But it was not just through people's generosity that we were encouraged. You see, we will also encourage with other believers' intentionality. Friends from church help us in packing our things. Volunteers la, no? Kasi alam nila, nalaga ako ng mga bata, so they pack up our things, they help us move our things. Many people visited us, prayed for us, and they gave us words of exhortation. They offered words of encouragement, but not through flattery or false hope, but by offering biblical hope. Now, some of you are wondering, Pastor Don, what in the world is biblical hope? Well, biblical hope is hope that is anchored in God's truths. It's a hope that rests not in our situation, but in God's opinion. It's a hope that's rooted not in our ability, but God's capability. Someone once said, 
true encouragement is not about making others feel better about themselves, but preparing them to know, obey, and enjoy more of God. You see, many times when we try to encourage people, we want them to feel good. But the most effective way to encourage someone who's struggling is to lovingly point people back to God and His truths. That's it, what it means to truly encourage someone. We stand alongside people, help them find courage in the Lord. Not in their own ability, but God's capability. We need to encourage one another with biblical hope and not false hope. Friend, who is someone you know who needs encouragement? When was the last time you encouraged with your generosity or with your intentionality? Do you faithfully encourage others with biblical hope? You see, whenever we gather, most likely there are people in our midst who are carrying heavy burdens. Some are discouraged, some are sad, some are fearful. People need for us to come alongside them, to encourage them, and enable them to face life's challenges with courage from the Lord. And so, here's what I'm inviting us to do. Let's take every opportunity to encourage one another. In fact, let's come together every week, and after the message ends, let's stay behind for a while. Let's reach out to another person and generally ask him or her kung kamusta ba talaga siya? And then take time to pray for one another. Let's practice this today. For those of us here on site, let's stay behind for a while. Let's connect with someone here. Let's get to know the person, ask how you can pray for him or her, and then end by just praying for one another. Throughout the week, kamustahin mo, alamin mo kung may progress, yung prayer concern niya, and continue to pray. We can also use Bible verses to encourage and exhort. Truth is, we all face adversities in life, and we all need the right kind of encouragement. Let's commit to encourage one another. Let us pray. Father in heaven, what a timely reminder this is that we are to encourage one another. The truth is, everyone needs encouragement. But not everyone is committed to faithfully encourage others. Lord, as we draw encouragement from you, as we draw our courage from you, help us also to be generous and intentional in giving courage to others. Give us wisdom on how to point people to you and to your truths that we may offer them hope that comes from you and you alone. May we be a community known for encouraging one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.